Cheers, Russ. Two teams out on the field. It's the claret and blue of Burnley. It's the white with the red sash of Southampton. Both sides looking to pick up first points in the new Premier League campaign. Burnley only played once. They were beaten at Leicester and in that game they picked up another couple of injuries. No Jay Rodriguez. They're still without James Tarkovsky and they're doing it tough on the injury front. Down to the bare bones for Sean Dyche's side but he can still call on Nick Pope in goal. Barsley, Long, Dunn and Taylor across the back. Stevens comes in for his debut, his 100th Premier League appearance and he joins Westwood, Brownhill and McNeil in the middle with Chris Wood and Matej Vidra up top. The bench looks very, very young and inexperienced. Billy Peacock, Farrell, Matt Loughton, Eric Peter all experienced but Bobby Thomas, Josh Benson, Mace Goodridge and Anthony Driscoll Glennon less so. Southampton just the one change and it Vestergaard comes in for Jack Stevens who drops to the bench. It's McCarthy in goal, Walker Peters, Vestergaard, Benrek and Bertrand at the back. Armstrong, Ward, Prowse, Romeo and Gineppo across the middle. It's Adams and Ings up top. Ings formerly of Burnley of course and on the bench Forster, Stevens, Long, Obafemi, Valerie Smallbone and Teller. Danny Mills former England defender alongside us. Danny, what are you expecting from this one tonight? Well, I think both sides need to really get going. Um, I'm expecting a, a fast start from, from both sides. They both need to set their stall out from the off, you know. And again, 2-4-4-2. Two, four, four, two, just look, have a look at this. Southampton have got four players on the halfway. This is like an American football system. It's like they're just going to launch it into the corner and all four players are going to run at it. I mean, this is, this is quality. This is old school. It is indeed. As the players uh, take a knee on the field in support of Black Lives Matter down on the field and we're almost set for action what a cracking day it has been in the Premier League you remember Chelsea 3-0 down drew 3 all at West Brom Manchester United's late late winner at Brighton and Everton beating Palace were underway will there be goals here at Turf Moor we hope so as Burnley were going from left to right knocked the ball long looking for Chris Wood he's got Matej Vidra with him in support but Southampton clear the lines it's downfield and Dunn will just look to ease the ball back to his goalkeeper Nick Pope all in green and he will clear it left footed it's going to be interesting isn't it a new centre half pairing as Southampton quickly looking to go forward but the ball again back to Pope no me no Tarkovsky Burnley are doing it tough at the back yeah they are uh, and I think that's why you know, Southampton will be looking at that and thinking right okay let's get on the front foot let's try and play in the Burnley half let's try and get Ings running in behind let's get Shea Adams running in behind let's test this centre half pairing all played forward by Burnley and nicked away by Gineppo who scampers back inside his own half the man from Marley and that was a bit of a waste there from Ryan Bertrand I don't think his manager will have been too impressed with that no. attempted back flick the ball was straight to him he could have had a touch couldn't he yeah sometimes you've got to you know, do the simple things uh, and especially early on in the game you know, don't try and be too flash be too clever early on just have a, get a good touch of the ball that's what they're uh, trying to do but at the moment Nick Pope's probably had more touches than anyone on the field he clears it long and downfield again Bertrand is underneath it this time he cushions the header infield to Romeo his crossfield ball not the best and Dwight McNeil will pounce upon it he loses out momentarily but he wins a free kick and Southampton at the moment Danny just been a little bit loose early on yeah it's almost like they've come out of the traps with a lot of adrenaline a little bit too quick sometimes you know they're just trying to try to force the situation McNeil, who was an ever-present in the Premier League last season for Burnley, he lets the free kick go out wide on the left-hand side. He'll pick it up now, look to put the early cross in. It was blocked by Ings, and he wins the ball back, Ings, but he can't control it. rolls out for a throw-in over on the far side of the field. Nil-nil, if you've just joined us, so in a couple of minutes here at Turf Moor. I have to say, we've, we've seen some absolutely rascal kits in the last few weeks, especially third strips and whatever. Liking Southampton's away kit. Yeah, it is. Uh, they're going to get a free kick here hands in the back from Josh Brownhill and as any defender is going to do these days as soon as they feel the hand on the back they're going to the ground free kick yeah they do uh, and, and rightly so you know you've got to it's like anything you play to the rules you know if you're going to get free kicks for it then do it I've said so many years with Sergio Aguero he's too honest at times he stays on his feet too often if you stay on your feet referees don't give you a free kick so you, sometimes you have to go down to get the referee to make the decision well, they've got a free kick. They're going back to their own goalkeeper, Alex McCarthy, all in yellow. And he will knock the ball long, looking for Shea Adams, beaten in the air by Dunn. Ball breaks to McNeil. McNeil on the halfway line. Back to Charlie Taylor. He will go looking for Vidra. It's hooked away at the back and towards the halfway line. But again, the ball just ricochets out of play for a throw. And this time to Southampton in front of the 
Dugouts over on the far side in the Bob Lord stand here at Turf Moor. And another throw in. It's just yet to get going this one. And understandably, two teams that have lost their opening fixtures in the Premier League. There is a little bit of pressure even at this early stage. Yeah, and there will be. Yeah, both these managers will be sensible. Uh, particularly Sean Dice. Look, don't give anything away unnecessarily. Let's not play out from the back for the 10 15 minutes. Forget that. Get the ball in their half. And if you're going to make a mistake, then it's not disastrous. Well, here's Romeo. Looks to spread play out wide. And despite the efforts of uh, Burnley the ball breaks to Bertrand on the left he gets it away now to Gineppo Gineppo looking to play the ball infield here's Oriol Romeo gets the ball back and it's at the back here with uh, Yannick Vestergaard and the ball just on the halfway line and Southampton finally getting a few touches here they may well go out to their right hand side it's, oh, it's not the best pass bit of a miscommunication and the ball eventually works out to Walker Peters he now cuts in field looking to slide the ball through for Adams in on goal chance pulls it back chance to put the ball in the net and it's that man Danny Ings side foots in from six yards out it was a wonderful pass for Adams he got to the byline pulled it back and there was Danny Ings his third goal of the season already it's Burnley nil Southampton one magnificent from Shea Adams as Walker Peters drives inside he plays the ball in behind and he's so intelligent and thinking does he go round the goalkeeper and make the angle incredibly tight to then squeeze it in with his right foot almost impossible but he just does a little reverse pass with his right foot incredibly aware where Danny Ings is he has a look up he knows where he is pulls it back to him and it's into the back of the net. Absolutely magnificent from Danny Ings. It's not the cleanest of finishes, but it doesn't matter. And that's that was down to Walker Peters driving in the Shea Adams. But the goal comes from Romeo's loose pass. Because what happened is, he, he played that pass. McNeil was then drawn out of his hole and sort of chased the ball towards the centre half. And then it meant that Walker Peters was in space and could drive forward. Yeah, he, it looked a really simple pass, didn't it? And he, he hit it straight between two teammates. And as Danny said, Burnley moved out of shape. It was a wonderful pass from Walker Peters. But Adams, the creator, and Ings, as he did so often here at Turf Moor for Burnley, finds the back of the net. And his great start to the season continues. Three already for him in the opening two and a bit games as Romeo is on the ball again now he finds Ings on the turn on halfway is he going to try and play Adams through no he came to this near side to Gineppo and all of a sudden Southampton have uh, got the bit between their teeth they go out to Walker Peters plays it down the channel here now is Armstrong pulls the ball in and there was nobody there surprising Danny Ings on the edge of the area right on the penalty spot it's put behind for a corner kick Danny but that was another chance the movement of Southampton front players is magnificent uh, Ings is dropping off they're playing like the perfect pairing up front again old school one comes short one goes long as one comes short someone's running into the channels it might be a midfield player and that's very very difficult to defend against and these defenders they're not used to that they used to play with one up front all the time and you know you've got two against one suddenly now they've got a big problem they have got a big problem they've got a corner to deal with Nick Pope waits just a yard off his line there are four Burnley defenders in that six yard box only Danny Ings is in there and again there's a host of white shirts this edge of the area they're going to come towards it now and it's headed down but wide in the end from uh, Jan Bednarek couldn't get anything on it they're certainly inventive aren't they at the set piece they're trying to move Burnley around and cause them some problems yeah and, that, and that's what you have to be you know in, in this day and age you know, everyone was lined up with the back post we had that under Steve McLaren um, and, and Steve Brown when I was at Middlesbrough we used to try different things and they used to, we used to work on different set pieces because you know teams will watch and they'll go right okay where's the threat where's the danger so you have to try and mix it up from time to time just to just to keep the other teams on their toes all cleared away by Pope and it's flicked on in midfield it'll fall to Brownhill Brownhill will try and retain possession it'll come this way now to Bardsley Bardsley on the halfway line Burnley nil Southampton one Danny Ings with a goal inside five minutes here at Turf Moor as again Pope ooh, almost miscontrolled it on the edge of his own six yard box heart in mouth just for a moment and then his clearance is a rushed one and it's picked up high up the field by Southampton and they come in field here and they try to play Ings in again this time it was Ward Prowse looking to thread the ball through but it was cleared away by Burnley and Pope just for a moment there Danny Mills looked flustered didn't he yeah I, I always try and give him the benefit of the doubt saying you know that people ask questions about how good is he with his feet and I have to say well he's not He's not really asked to play that way. 
but sometimes when he when he has got the ball and he's got a little bit of time he, he's not the cleanest of strikers of a ball at times and, and that's I'm not trying to be derogatory but you know he's, no, he's, he's got a free strike of the ball it's not a clean strike is it it's not like no. a lot of the goalkeepers that we see that can ping it properly well he found a good ball there to Wood who now finds McNeil down the left this is really the furthest Burnley have been downfield McNeil right by the corner flag looking to win a corner it's only a throw in I'm just going back to that point it was a poor first touch it forced him onto his left foot and he rather shoveled the clear it's a swinger isn't yeah, it his yeah. left foot is an out and out swinger yeah here's a throw in then for Burnley they trail by a goal to nil only really Chris Wood waiting in the box the throwing down by the corner flag now they're gonna look to launch the ball into the near post and it's put behind by Bednarek at the near post and it's a corner for Burnley and now they'll bring the likes of Dunn and Kevin Long forward hoping to get the most out of this set piece well, so Southampton now having got themselves in front got to keep their concentration Burnley always a threat from set pieces and it's going to be an in-swinging corner from the far side of the field everybody back for Southampton looking to protect this lead ball fizzed in at the near post and it's hammered away by Armstrong at the near post it wasn't the best delivery in all fairness and they'll get another go over on that far side McNeil is offering the short corner option but looks like they're going to put it straight into the penalty area this time it's a floated one McCarthy comes punches it. it's a poor punch the ball's bouncing around in the area referee says play on it's played back here the cross comes in from Bardsley it's kept in at the far post the flag didn't go up Burnley will play on here McNeil edge of the box puts the cross back in chested down that was so unlucky Vidra looking to chest the ball to Wood and it was hooked away just in the nick of time and the ball back to the halfway line that was great awareness from Vidra it was a little bit unlucky there yeah, he, he did that. I was here for the Carabao Cup game, uh, where he, I think it was Rodriguez actually did that for Vidra, the opposite way round, and, and set him up for the goal. Again, it, really good sort of partnerships that these two clubs have with the centre forwards, you know, being unselfish at times. And a lot of times, strikers try and bring that down or try a ludicrous shot that gets hooked over the stand. You know, they're, they're quite happy to, to lay it off for their partners. 10 on the clock live on TalkSport 2 Matt Wilson with the former England international Danny Mills here at Turf Moor where Burnley trail by a goal to nil Danny Ings on 5 minutes a neat finish from inside the air after good work from his strike partner Shea Adams it's two four four twos here tonight and both teams are trying to attack as and when they can but Southampton certainly started the brighter here as they will play the ball forward through McCarthy headed away by Long but Bertrand should deal with this inside his own half knocks it down the line Gineppo let it run and Bardsley did he kick that in no he didn't and it's a throwing down below us interesting this for Burnley we mentioned the lack of their first choice centre half and you almost feel that Ings and Adams with that early goal have really thrived on that and they're looking for more opportunities well they Danny Ings is in sensational form, isn't he? You know, he's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and of course, you know, he'll be looking for more England call-ups and England goals and everything that he possibly can with those three games coming up and the squad's announced very, very shortly. But he's just... He's back to his best. He's, he's confident. Yeah. He's got self-belief. You know, and that, the goal that he's just scored, it's, it's not the cut play. It's not a clean hit at all. It comes off the top of his foot. But he makes that run, he gets into the box, he's in the right position and you make your own luck. Yep, you do. You get the feeling if he hadn't scored for 10 games, that would have gone over the bar, wouldn't it? But he yeah, or it, it, or it hits, hits the top of his foot and, and goes somewhere else. Yeah. But you know, when you make your own luck, you know, at times. Well, here Southampton with uh, Shea Adams looking to get into the area. He looked to exchange passes with Armstrong and it's kicked away in the end. Anywhere will do for Dunn. Just slams it out of play over on the far side. They look busy, they look quick, they look pacey around the box, Southampton. They lead by a goal to nil here and they're clearly on top at the moment. Thoughts for uh, Sean Dyche. His side need to really get involved here if they can. But they're defending again over on the far side. Vidra knocks it out for another throw into Southampton who lead by a goal to nil at Turf Moor. What about that comeback for Chelsea? Three down at West Brom to get a point in injury time. <laughs> well, that, well, I turned up here, didn't I? And I you know, jokingly went, oh, you know, Frank's going to come under a bit of pressure. Pochettino might be available. And suddenly, you know, and also it's the, the three young English lads, isn't it? You know, that, that turned it around. Yeah. You know, Mount, um, hudson Adoy, uh, and then obviously Sammy Abraham came on and, and got the, was it 93rd? Yeah, it was. I mean, the equaliser, I mean, you know, delighted to come back from 3-0 down he'll be pleased with that they'll be 
very, very upset that they conceded three in the first place. Yeah, here's Gineppo, he gets the ball away as Southampton picked it up high up the field. Bertrand had made a run in behind, the ball didn't quite find him, but he gets it nevertheless. Hold down by the corner flag, left-hand side as Southampton attack the goal away to our left. Here now is uh, Romeo, he has it, he'll go back to the halfway line they're not allowing Burnley to settle on the ball at all here Southampton it's a really impressive opening for them they lead by a goal to nil the goal from Danny Ings on five minutes and now they're going out to Walker Peters on the right hand side he looks up there's no one in and around the box he just holds up play and will go back inside his own half and they'll build again here the Saints who are on top and in front crucially for them Here's they, they, they look very comfortable don't they Mark they you know, do, on the do. ball and, and they all want the ball yeah and, and I think you know Russell asked me about Russell asked beforehand, you know, about, you know, all Southampton, is there a bit of pressure on because they haven't started? Yeah, well, welcome to our uh, listeners on Talk Sport. You join us at Turf Moor where Burnley nil, Southampton 1 is the latest score. Danny Ings with a goal on five minutes after great work from uh, Adams on the byline. Pulled it back from the right-hand side and there was Ings to tuck in his third goal of the season. Danny Mills, a former England international alongside me. And Danny, Southampton well and truly on top here. Yeah, they are. They're really, really dominating, playing some good football. They look full of confidence, which is a surprise after their first two results. It's a fantastic fantastic goal Walker Peters drove in from the right back area played the ball inside it was just played round the corner he played it through for, for Shea Adams who looked like he was going to go round Pope take it with the outside of his right foot the angle would have then been incredibly tight but his awareness to do a little reverse pass to Danny Ings who was running in caught it off the top of his foot the finish was a little bit fortunate in all honesty but he had an open goal he got a contact and tapped it it was a really good goal and since then Southampton have been dominating the, the passing is very very slick uh, Ralph Harson who has clearly got a way of playing and been very very impressed with Southampton yeah got a free kick here this game is live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 at Turf Moor it's Burnley nil Southampton 1 and the ball is in the Southampton half they've got a free kick here and they will just roll the ball back here it's with the defender Vestergaard, he looks to play the ball over the top, Walker Peters has made a good run here, he's got goal side of Charlie Taylor, early ball into the box, they're arriving late, Long just nicks it away in the nick of time, but Gineppo will keep it in on the left hand side, we'll play it back now, here's Bertrand, this is really good from Southampton, they look full of confidence at the moment, Romeo gets the ball back to halfway, they'll start again ball with Walt Prowse, moves it back, they're going to come with a diagonal ball here looking for Gineppo, great first touch, in on the edge of the area, looks for the give and go, played to Bertrand, pulled back, there were four white shirts in the middle, and one of them was uh, Adams who hooks his shot over the top, that was another very presentable chance for Southampton. Good play again from Southampton, stretching the play, and then when they get it, the sharp, quick passing, Bertrand cuts it back to Shea Adams, who, it's a difficult chance, and honestly, it bounces couple of yards before and it's on the rise that's never a difficult one to keep down but what about the number of white shirts in the box or there were four or five you could have picked out there at the byline yeah and, and this is what I said beforehand you know when Russell asked me about you know are Southampton sort of under a little bit of pressure with the start that they've had and I said no I said, he's a good manager he's got a way of playing it's two results you know don't worry about that one against was Tottenham which you probably expect Tottenham to win that game anyhow but I think they've come here they've got a real point to prove uh, they look sharp they probably need to score another goal because when you're on top you've got to keep scoring 17 gone here at Turf Moor that was the voice of Danny Mills from England International former Leeds man as well we've got live exclusive commentary tomorrow of the Yorkshire Derby Sheffield United against Leeds United 12 o'clock tomorrow across on Talk Sport as now Southampton looking to pinch the ball high up the field but this time Burnley retain possession Barzi has it deep in his own half he goes long looking to get the ball away for Brownhill who's playing on this right hand side he chases the ball down but it's brought away Romeo will look to play across it's a slightly dangerous pass but it was an accurate one and Walker Peters nods the ball in and now here's Danny Ings on the half turn driving through the centre circle Gineppo in front of him tries to poke the ball in but it was well read at the back by Long just got the ball away and here now is Brownhill gets the ball back in field and Burnley looking to try and get their foot on the ball they haven't really had any real spells of possession Westwood gets it in field it's chested down by Chris Wood and Burnley have it just on the edge of the centre circle they'll go back to Pope they're a goal down they haven't really had much possession have they Danny up to press I mean they've hardly had the ball um, I think they've had one foray 
you know, into the Southampton half. I mean, Southampton have just dominated. You know, it, it, this this almost looks like a, a, a top six side against a, a bottom six side at the moment, doesn't it? The, the way that the game's going. It is, but it is. As we said only one nil. Early stages here. Westwood just signed that new three-year contract. The Burnley captain tonight. No Tarkovsky, of course. Is Speculation builds as to his future. Here, though, is Charlie Taylor on the left. Feeds the ball. Vidra lets it run to Wood. Wood tries to play it back to Vidra. He's wide on the left-hand side. Puts across towards the back post. Brownhill is there. Beaten to it. Gets a shot in and it's blocked. Initially, he was beaten in the air. The ball fell and he was quickest to react. His shot blocked him behind. But again, we've seen that link-up. Vidra and Wood look working well. Yeah, again, partnership that works well together. Vidra just stood it up a little bit too high to the far post. Very, very difficult to get any sort of power on that header from Brownhill knocks it down Bertrand they're both sort of looking for it Brownhill reacts first uh, but then Bertrand is able to, to turn and get the block in force the corner everybody back again for Southampton ball whipped in towards the near post it comes off uh, head at the near post it rolls all the way through and they're going to let this go out for another corner over on the far side of the ground and Westwood is going to go across and take it it's down the Burnley left hand side and you get the feeling at the moment, set pieces off for Burnley's best chance to get back into this one. Yeah, and, and so they should, you know, but people always say, oh, you know, oh, you're a set piece team. Why not? I worked with Howard Wilkinson and how was, you know, whatever it was, percentages that come from set pieces. It's a free cross into the box. Well, here's a chance for Charlie Taylor to put the cross in. Keeper was coming for it. It was headed away from him by one of his teammates. It's heading around edge of the area and Southampton will get it away. They were looking to break, but a good tackle from Brownhill. Ball works its way wide on the left-hand side. McNeil goes past his man. Can he put the ball in? He can. Vidra goes for the overhead kick. It might well fall to him again and he lashes his shot and it's deflected behind for yet another Burnley corner that was better good ball in there Burnley starting to come back into it now aren't they forcing you know two or three corners in a row now putting the Southampton defense under pressure and what Burnley are doing very very well they're putting they're putting balls into the box just in that no man's land that second six yard box on the edge of that where the goalkeeper doesn't really want to come for it ball going to be fired in towards the near post it's headed upwards by a Southampton defender at the near post it's then cleared towards the edge of the area brave header from Taylor was that handball it was 20 yards out maybe 22 yards out and a free kick here right in front of goal this is going to be an interesting opportunity they're claiming uh, innocence the Southampton defenders but there was uh, well actually just seen the replay it looked like it hit the player in the face didn't it I think I think it's a high foot I think that's what they're talking about. Okay. That's that's what that's what the infringement's for. It's not for the handball. There's no real contract, but it, I think you have to say that's dangerous. It's yeah. what is in and around his face, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Or Prowse, it was who was penalised. Or McNeil is standing over this one. Is he going to take it? Dead. Well, a l half a yard off cent central. Yeah. What is it? Maybe 25 yards out. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, you have to say it, if, you're sh if the wall's not there, keeper should save this all day long. Well, he should do. Is it going to be McNeil? Is it Brownhill who stood over it? Here comes the shot, hits the wall. It was Brownhill who took it in the end. It cleared up in the air. Brownhill was beaten in the air by Shea Adams. And now, again, Southampton will look to break. But Gineppo's control wasn't great. And Taylor picks it up on the halfway line. He's then bundled to the ground by Gineppo. And it's a free kick for Burnley. They were just enjoying at the moment their best spell of the game. 22 on the clock on Talk Sport 2, Burnley nil, Southampton 1. Yeah, they are, and if you're going to use set pieces, why not? You know, as I said earlier, if, if from open play you, you're given the choice of an unopposed cross into the box, why wouldn't, you know, you take that option up? Well, here is a cross. It was aimed at Ward. He was beaten in the air and he's going to get penalised, Chris Ward. And Burnley boot the ball away in frustration. That was a, a decent chance. It was a decent cross in, but... In the end, it is a free kick. You are listening to Burnley against Southampton on TalkSport 2 with Now TV. Don't forget, you can watch Manchester City against Leicester live tomorrow with a Now TV Sky Sports Pass for just 9 99 Search Now TV for more details. Free kick then, which McCarthy will take. And Southampton just had to do a spell of defending there, but they still have that one goal lead given to them by Danny Ings strike on five minutes. All cleared forward by McCarthy, headed forward by Westwood. Vidra will give chase here, but the ball is going to be eased back towards McCarthy by Vestergaard. And Vidra now is chasing along the back four. The ball back, he's not going to get on the end of it. No, Walker Peters, his back pass was just about heavy enough, but McCarthy couldn't hang around, just clears it downfield. And 
They've just got to take care of work, haven't they, here, Southampton? They're getting a little bit caught out at the back on occasion. Ball forward, Vidra was offside. He challenged for it in the air. Referee's going to play advantage. No, he's not. He's blown the whistle, and we've got a free kick. Burnley finally coming to the party. We've just seen the goal again on our little monitors. It's a brilliant ball in behind from Walker Peters. But it's only made because Shayange makes that run. He makes that darting diagonal run. Football's a very simple game at times. Straight pass, diagonal run. You know, and, and, and the other way around. And that's what makes space. And that's how he got in. And then he was incredibly aware and intelligent to cut the ball back for Danny Ings. Yeah, he knew where Ings was going to be. And he put it right in that spot and Ings finished it. In the corner of the net, 1-0, and uh, we just saw more movement from Southampton, didn't lead to anything. But that, Jones, it's, it's not, it wasn't particularly clever what they did, it was just that diagonal run, straight ball through. Yeah. If not, it's the other way around, it's diagonal ball, straight, you know, straight run, simple as that. It's, we overcomplicate football sometimes, you know, trying to make it too int intricate. The idea is to get the ball in the back of the net as quickly and as simply as possible. Yeah, well Danny Ings has done that for the third time, got a double against Spurs last week. We get tomorrow Leeds at Bramall Lane against Sheffield United. That's three points all day long. Live, live and exclusive on Talk Sport. Here now, Southampton come forward again. I'm confident with that one. <laughs> at, at least another three goals for Leeds. Only, only three. Yeah, only three this time. We can take take three. Mm. Three goals, three points. That'll do. And that should be a cracker. It's live and exclusive on Talk Sport tomorrow. And on Talk Sport two, we've got a good one from the Championship as well. Bournemouth Norwich. Live from four o'clock, uh, Joe Shannon and David Connolly, our commentary team there tomorrow. And a host of football throughout the week. The Carabao Cup continues. Every night, isn't it? It is, every night. Fact, it's, it's, almost, it's almost twice a night, I think. <laughs> well, on Wednesday, I think we've got three games uh, live. Two on TalkSport, two one on TalkSport. So you're not going to miss an any of the action in the Carabao Cup. Here in the Premier League, though, it's Burnley nil, Southampton 1. Danny Ings with a goal, a loose pass there from Bardsley, almost put long in trouble and he just had a look at his teammate there long they will rectify the situation and Pope will clear it away left footed this time well but Ward Prowse picks up the pieces in the centre circle and Southampton have the ball again good turn from Vestergaard Vestergaard now will go up to Walker Peters he's got room to go forward another run here from Ings but the pass just didn't find him and Dunn was across took it down nicely Jimmy Dunn scored his uh, first Burnley goal at Leicester in the defeat last week and he's back doing the day job defending it's out for a throw in far side you can see the movement from Ings and from Adams they're always on the move aren't they but it's not complicated all, all they're doing they're, they're, they're timing their runs very very well and they're running off the back of centre halves you know into that space into that area between the centre half and the full back and then if the ball's good enough they're in and, and it's it's not complicated it's very very simple to do but it takes effort and application and Ings and Adams have, have got an abundance of that. They have. Here's Bertrand on the near side. Gineppo gets the ball back. He gives it now to Ward Prowse. It's so easy to play as a defender when everything's played in front of you. And it's anyhow, and sometimes it can be a little bit tippy tappy. The last thing you want as a defender is having to turn and face your own goal. And it's constant from Ings and from Adams in the middle of the park. Now there's a little dummy. And here's Gineppo trying to get on the half turn as Dunn just held off Gineppo and gets it back to Pope. But the link-up play, intricate there from Southampton, but Burnley get the ball away again. They show by a goal to nil, Burnley, here at Turf Moor. Barzi plays it forward, looking for Wood. This could be a good ball. Wood takes it on his chest. Tight angle, he's gone down in the box. He's appealing for a penalty. He's fallen on the ball. The referee has given a free kick against him. I think they've got to check this one. I think they'll have a look at this for VAR. There's, I think there's a nudge. It's, is there enough of a nudge? Well, Wood took it on the chest. Well, there are hands on him, and he fell over. It wasn't the uh, greatest nudge. I think the referee is happy. He's just going to let play go on. There were hands on him. Whether those hands are enough to knock him to the ground, well, that's it. It's carry on. No, no VAR involved there. And the Sean Dyche is furious. The thing is, they were enough to knock him to the ground. He did go to ground. <laughs> well. We mentioned it earlier, didn't we? The defenders do it all the time, yeah. and it's a free kick. Ball played forward. Bards is down injured. Burnley will chase the long ball. Vidra, he gets it back to Westwood, who's passed forward, evades Wood. And if if I'm honest, I, I don't think it was enough for a penalty. You know, when I've seen it, and I've seen the replay as well, there is a little bit of contact, but it doesn't always mean every contact has to be a foul. By the letter of the law, 
He started to happened on the full back and he fell over when he said that's a Pro free yeah, kick. But, but, exactly, listen, by the letter of the law, you know, was there contact? Yes. So this, well, this is an interesting one. This has been an elbow. That's why Bardsley's down. It's Gineppo on Bardsley, catched him with an elbow. Don't think it's intentional. No, just so, but it's again. a nasty elbow, isn't it? Yeah, and Bardsley's getting treatment for a bang on the ear, I think. Maybe a little bit of a cut there, possibly. Um, he did get caught. Gineppo, again, there didn't look to be a lot of intent in it, but he caught him with the elbow, and there is a little bit of blood there on uh, the head of Phil Bardsley. He was just getting a bit of treatment down below us. It is Burnley nil, Southampton 1. It's Mark Wilson with Danny Mills, a former England international and former Leeds man. And we've got Sheffield United Leeds tomorrow. It's a big game for Chris Wilder's side, isn't it? Yeah, oh, sorry, just, just looking at the penalty again. So it comes in from behind. There's a little nudge on Chris Wood. I mean, it's this... It's Bednarek that just gives it, puts his hand on his back. Wood obviously feels it and goes down. I don't think there's enough contact to give a penalty. But if he, if he if he'd have given the penalty, we'd have gone. I can understand why. Yeah. You'd, but also, by, you'd also be going. If that's a penalty, we're going to have twenty again. Well, yeah, sure. but yeah, but by the that you know, by the letter of the law, did he push him? Yes. Was that push hard enough for him to go down? Mm, probably not. Is the answer. Well, Sean Dyche was furious, Hang on, wasn't he? I, I've just, I think I've just given referees some praise for using common sense. Yeah, well, no, this, this don't clip be, that bit out and use oh, it so this, forever. This, this could be breaking news. <laughs> Burnley nil. Can we, can we, edit, that, can we edit that out? They will use it against you. <laughs> Next time you criticise a referee, they'll play that. Oh, right, well, they'll haunt give me, you with it. Give me five minutes. Yeah, they'll haunt you with it. Ball is back in play. Bars is back on the field. Uh, McCarthy has it away to our right-hand side. And it's Southampton who lead here, as you say, in a huge weekend of sport. Sheffield United leads tomorrow. Bournemouth, Norwich is live and exclusive on TalkSport to your home of the EFL. Tuesday night, Spurs, Chelsea live on TalkSport in the Carabao Cup. And then on Wednesday, a trio of games. Uh, Newport, Newcastle, the early kickoff with Ian Dancer and David Conley on TalkSport 2, followed up by Brighton, Manchester United on TalkSport. All played forward here by Southampton, but Bardsley hooks it away. Picked up by Romeo, and again the white shirts are flooding forward. Here's Armstrong on the turn edge of the box, but just turned into trouble. Lost the ball, and it's nicked away. Westwood will get the foul just outside his own area, and Burnley get a free kick. Chance every time Southampton go forward, though, in fairness, there are floods of white shirts coming forward over the halfway line. Only 1 0, though. That will be what Sean Dyche will be taking out of this situation, Danny, isn't it? His team haven't been great, but it is only 1 0 down. Yeah, and that's what you do. You, have, you know, stay in the game. Get to that point where you just think, you know what? It's not a huge problem. Okay, we're not playing great at the moment, but it's only 1 0. And while it's 1 0, we're still in a chance. We're getting back into it. Yeah, pushing, uh, just gone past the half hour mark here at Turf Moor. It's a cool, crisp evening in the northwest of England. A few bobble hats in the press box. It's into that time of year. So I've had to have a throw in over on the far side, inside their own half. They're looking to work it down there, right? Taylor will head it away. Vidra did well to get anything on that, but couldn't control it. And it's out for another throw in to Southampton. 1 0, then the early goal inside five minutes. And neither keeper's had too much to do since that, but there have been half chances at either end as the ball is worked back to Mick Pope, all in green. And he will clear it downfield on his right foot this time. Brownhill, the target, wins the header. Will fall here for Westwood, heads it forward. He was looking for Vidra, didn't get on the end of it. Ball flipped round the corner by Ings, it breaks back to Romeo. Romeo now to Bertrand. Bertrand with Gineppo on this left hand side, just feeds the ball to the from Marley, ball goes back inside the Saints half and they now will come forward, intercepted by Bardsley Bardsley now eases the ball off to Stevens, Stevens then finds McNeil, Taylor is on the overlap, racing forward for Claret and Blue Shirts, looking to get in the box as Taylor is upended and that will be a free kick, about six yards away from the byline on the left hand side of the area that was better football from Burnley it is and now they're in a great position you know it's ten yards in from the touchline, 10 yards in from the byline as well. So they've got a great opportunity now to put this into the box with real quality. This is the sort of free kick where you can bend it towards the far post and there's a good chance that if everybody misses it, 
it just nestles in because the goal keeps expecting somebody to get a touch on it well there's been a couple of crosses in and McCarthy hasn't looked overly convincing up to press he waits just a yard off his line there are five Burnley players on the edge of the six yard box waiting for this ball to be whipped in it's going to be right footed swung in towards the far post and it was inches wide and McCarthy was backpedalling he thought that may have been creeping in at the far post that was very very close and that's, the way, and that's what you do you're trying to score at the far post he actually he hits it a little bit too high so no one can get a header on it but it's about a foot wide in the end but that's that's what you would always say you know whip it in and if no one gets a touch the keeper doesn't want to go for it because any sort of touch and, and he gets caught out completely a chance just gone by the far post still Burnley nil Southampton one here on touch but two well headed away by Burnley are starting to get into the game a little bit more now having had the shock of that early goal they conceded as Bertrand heads the ball in the air and it's headed forward by Romero a bit of head tennis going on here about six or seven successive headers Wood tried to cushion the ball in the midfield and eventually Burnley will get it courtesy of Dunn moves it now to Taylor McNeil is on the move as is Vidra down that left hand side Vidra is first to the ball he nudged it past one defender but Walker Peters was there but he's given it straight to McNeil McNeil on the left hand side of the penalty area tries to drive the cross and it's blocked and out four are thrown over on the far side and again Burnley just looking a little bit more dangerous certainly down that left hand side where Charlie Taylor's getting heavily involved cross comes into the area cleared away at the near post by the Saints and the ball back to the halfway line where McNeil will be really disappointed he he went for a spectacular volley style cross when really he just needed to take a touch it's out for a throw in yeah but Burnley are getting better they're starting to come into this game now Southampton have just lost a little bit of control in the middle of the park whereas early on Romeo and Wood Prowse were controlling things they were passing it around dictating the tempo of the, pl of the play Burnley have now got themselves on the front foot they have indeed but they trail by that goal to nil Sean Dyche's 400th game as a manager will he pick up points the first of Burnley's season tonight Long heads the ball away from the throw and Vidru's been busy heads it down now on the turn trying to get the ball forward to Southampton and they're getting down that right hand side and there's bodies in the box but just out of the run of uh, Danny Ings and it's cleared away by Burnley but again the movement of this Southampton forward line is causing Burnley all sorts of problems it, it's sharp isn't it I mean Shea Adams is wanted by a lot of clubs um, especially in the championship for, for what he's done in you know in, in that division in, in recent past uh, but also I think Danny Ings is on he's on form he's confident he wants the ball he's making those runs but what I love about him he makes unselfish runs he keep and he keeps making them whether he gets the ball or not well he's got a chance here edge of the area he's touch just let him down but it's not cleared away trying to get to the byline Southampton crosses blocked it's up in the air and it's hooked out for a corner Pope was trying to come and get the ball but he was beaten to it by a defender it's hooked behind and again Burnley struggling to clear their lines corner Southampton yeah, and, and that's what second phase of the attack Southampton they pen you in and when Burnley try and get out they don't clear it properly they're back on top of you and they got third fourth man runners getting in behind you but what I love about Ings he's like Lineker Shearer Ian Wright he makes those runs across the near post he makes those runs in behind and if he doesn't get it he keeps making them yeah and here comes the corner then it's down the right it's going to be a left footed in swinging corner for Southampton lots of movement again in the box it's played towards uh, Ward Prowse edge of the area it was a planned move didn't work out flooding forward comes Southampton but the ball cleared away and that will be a free kick it was a foul uh, down below us there by Jan Bednarek well it was a planned move from the corner but you thought Ward Prowse was never really going to win that header was he edge of the area no it wasn't it, was, it wasn't really hit hard enough I don't think it was meant for Ward Prowse I think it was meant for whoever was coming in behind him but the corner was a little bit under hit but the free kick we just had there was that any different to the penalty appeal from Chris well, Wood we said it didn't we if it had been outside the area but, uh, you're not trying to tell me there's, di there's, there's different laws for things inside there and outside are you no not me <laughs> ball play forwards by Burnley and Ings will have an eye on that England squad announced this Thursday will his name be a part of it Bardsley drives forward looking to get the ball away here's a chance for McNeil he'll square the ball out now to Charlie Taylor plenty of teammates wait in the middle but it's headed away by Bednarek on the six yard box that was better again from Burnley certainly that left hand side looks to be where the chances are going to come from but they've got to go all the way back to Pope just a stat there Danny Ings has scored 25 of Southampton's 
last 54 Premier League goals. Only Jamie Vardy has beaten that tally in that period. So, to finish with the amount of goals that he did last season in, in a effectively a struggling side for a lot of it is absolutely superb. And I think we've always known he's got immense quality. It's unfortunate, I think, with a couple of movements and you know a couple of really, really big injuries. But now he looks back to his very, very best. He does indeed. And, any, anybody, you've got the binoculars. Anybody here from Gareth Southgate's not here from? I'll have a look. I'll have a look you, at you, half time. No, I, was gonna, I was just thinking, but it's not. It's not far from to come. That's a, might, he might be stopping here on his way home. Is what I was thinking. Yeah, possibly. He might have us on in the car. I don't know where he's been today. You're listening live on Talks. What two Matt Wilson with Danny Mills here at Turf Moor in Southampton through that Danny Ings goal on five minutes lead by a goal to nil. Another huge weekend of sport here on Talk Sport and Talk Sport Two. And more live football tomorrow on both TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Ball cleared away by Pope towards the midfield. Powerful header there from Vestergaard. All here is picked up. They're trying to play it over the top. Ings was trying to get in behind. It was Adams actually on that occasion. Couldn't get on to the end of Ings' ball through. And it's played away by Taylor. Taylor will go forward. Walker Peters will nick it away. Walt Prowse gets it back for Southampton on the halfway line. Here now they have it with Romeo on the far side of the field Shea Adams is through the middle he's contemplating making a run but the ball not looking like it's coming to him at the moment will hold on to it he now is Armstrong Armstrong was beaten to it initially by Stevens playing his 100th Premier League appearance his first one for Burnley's new club and the ball here with Gineppo on the turn Baz is there good fullback play just eased him away from goal and the ball back in the centre circle. Romeo looks around him, happy to have the ball. Holds off Westwood, will go back in the end over on the far side. And Southampton just patiently here, they're showing they're all comfortable on the ball. Yeah, they are. Uh, and, and that's what they that's what they need. They need, you know, Ward Prowse and, and Romeo in that sort of situation just to dictate the tempo of play. And, and that's they've just calmed it down in the last five minutes. They have, but now they're looking to come forward again. They're running across the field here with. Armstrong gets the ball away to Bertram. Now joining the attack is Vestergaard. Gets it back now to Ward Prowse. And every player, outfield player, is in the Burnley half at the moment. Only McCarthy away to our left as Bertram tries to get behind Brownhill. He's got to the byline, puts it across to the six yard box. Ball not cleared away, it breaks for Armstrong. Armstrong runs and they're going to be offside here. Southampton, he couldn't control it, but that was more danger. And again, you'd have to say that's a great ball into the area from the byline. Bertram did very, very well again. It's a little one too. He's getting behind Brownhill. Is there a foul here? Ooh. Again, did he catch him a little bit late? Could have given it, couldn't he, I think? <laughs> Uh, not for me that one, but uh, he got to the byline, he just couldn't find a teammate in the box, but he put it in the right area of the field. It was Armstrong, wasn't it, that came sort of came from deep, tried to bring it down under control and, and just was a bit heavy on the touch. He yeah, was at a tight angle, wasn't he? The shot wasn't on. Pope clears his lines. But, but it just goes to show, Mark, just goes to show again, simple play, little one-two, give and go, yeah. play it inside, run the other way, defender ball watches, and you get in. It's not. Football's not complicated. There's a crispness about their passing, yeah. isn't there? Short, short and sharp. Yeah. That, that's what it is. Short and sharp pass and move. It's like I've just reinvented the game. But, but, that, but that's all it is. And that's why Southampton keep getting into those positions. They do. They lead by a goal to nil. We're approaching uh, half time here. About five minutes to the break. Southampton, I think, would feel a lot happier in that away dressing room if they could pick up a second goal here. They have been the better side for much of it. Burnley have had spells of pressure, but other than that free kick from McNeil, haven't really set any testers on McCarthy's goal. He's had a couple of crosses to deal with. Here now is Ings on the turn. Over the halfway line he goes. Shea Adams peels off to the right. He tried to get it to Gineppo on the left. Gineppo beats his man, edge of the area. Barzi gets back. Is he going to shoot? He is deflected. Can Pope keep it in? He will just about keep it in. And a sliding save away from goal and stops it going behind for a corner. All with Taylor. It's certainly that Burnley left, isn't it, where they look more, there's certainly more of an attacking threat with Taylor getting forward on that left hand side. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I think you know, they've got to try and explain. I mean, Bardsley's not known for his attacking prowess. Yeah. 35 years old. He might get a chance to go forward here, though. He's invited over the halfway line and there's no one in front of him. Gineppo is having to track back, so Barzi will cut infield. 
lays the ball off here to Stevens. Stevens will say to Westwood, here you go, on the right-hand side, puts in the cross. It's headed away powerfully, and Gineppo tried to flick it on, and it's out for a throw-in over on the near side of the ground. It's still 1-0 to Burnley. And the ball goes back in the Burnley half. Can they provide a ball in towards Chris Wood, looking for his fifth goal in five Premier League starts, but not to be it's cleared away from on this occasion and now neat play again from the Saints in the middle of the park Romeo will pick the ball up he gets it out wide on this near side we're into the final 90 seconds of normal time here at Turf Moor in the first half we're on TalkSport 2 Southampton lead by a goal to nil Bertrand just cushions the ball back and it's at the back with uh, Vestergaard he goes all the way back to McCarthy and the ball going to be eventually played forward it's over Ings and headed away by Bardsley Brownhill wins ahead and now he's saying he got caught in that challenge he's gone down in a hit again the referees let him play go he won't surely for that well there's a player dive Romeo is furious with Westwood he felt he dived to try and win a free kick Burnley are going to play on despite the fact that they've got one of their own team down here Taylor goes forward oh no he's going to stop play and the referee will come over to this near side and see about Brownhill but he went down he feels he was caught in the challenge there don't he? well I think he's only there's not a lot in that to be honest two players two players just going for the ball what's he what's he got then holding his arm his arm or his chest maybe he's getting some treatment it was it's almost like, like Romeo's arm caught Brownhill's arm I don't they didn't yeah, it was across the chest as well, wasn't it? It wasn't it was a, a race down. No, it was just two players jumping for the ball, and of course when you jump, your arms come out a little bit, and their arms caught each other. Yeah. I mean, if, if I'm a Burnley player, I'm going, oi, get yourself up. <laughs> now, wrong with you? Well, we've only got one added on minute at the end of this first half, so... We are going to continue. Brownell is up. He will continue. And surely here Southampton will give the ball back to Burnley. They'll put it back to Pope. And it's as you were, Burnley back on the ball here. They've got 60 seconds or so to try and conjure up an equalising goal here just before the break at Turf Moor. Vidra beaten in the air there by Vestergaard. And Taylor on that far side can't keep it in. He's going to throw in. No, he hasn't. He's furious. He thought he had. And they'll waste as much time as they can here Southampton they've got half the job done they've got themselves in front here with that Danny Ings goal on five minutes and whilst they dominated the opening 15-20 minutes they haven't had too many serious chances after that they are busy though in and around the box it's been set piece action mainly for Burnley and the problem may come in the second half where Sean Dyche hasn't got an awful lot of ammunition on the bench the uh, referee here Andre Mariner blows the half-time whistle. It was a very entertaining start. Southampton took their first chance. Shea Adams getting to the byline after a good ball from Walker Peters. He pulled it back. And there was Danny Ings to fire in his third goal of the season. They've had plenty of ball, Southampton, but they've not put this one to bed just yet. At the break at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Southampton 1. Yeah, should be. Um, Southampton, I'm sure, want more of the same football that... Uh, got them in front here but as Danny kept saying in that first half until they get a second goal Burnley are not out of this one yet and I think that's what they've got to concentrate on at half time say look okay we didn't play particularly well we were we got off to a bad start we allowed Southampton you know too much time and space in the middle of the park so let's try and address that uh, and get that sorted out but we're still in it you know and, and that's what that's the the hope that Sean Burnley uh, Sean Burnley Sean Dyche has to instill into Burnley because you know that they're not out of it yet and they've and they've shown that with a little bit more quality in the final third you know with set pieces they can get you know they can cause problems we'll find out how they get on no changes uh, for either side at half time then so Burnley go with Nick Pope in goal it's about four of Barsley Long Dunn and Taylor Brownhill Westwood Stevens and McNeil in the middle Chris Wood and Matej Vidra up top and for the visitors Ralph House and Hootel goes with McCarthy in goal Walker Peters Vestergaard Benrek and Bertrand at the back it's Armstrong Will Prowse Romeo and Gineppo in the middle Shea Adams and Danny Ings up top three goals already this season in the Premier League for Danny Ings and you wouldn't rule him out scoring another one here this afternoon or this evening 
All in with Burnley and their or, Claret or, 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 tonight, or tonight, even. Or tonight, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it, with football at the moment? It's going four, four or five games a day. I don't know what time of day it is. Yeah, well, we've got plenty more coming up for you on TalkSport. TalkSport 2 tomorrow and throughout the week as the Carabao Cup continues. Uh, Burnley are attacking from right to left. The Jimmy McElroy stand away to our left. And they could have an early chance here as... Uh, they were invited forward, Barzi, ball into the far post, there's Wood, heads across goal, good save in the end from McCarthy, the ball just hung in the air and he dived to his uh, left hand side to get the ball, Wood just probably couldn't get enough purchase on that header. No, the cross came in from sort of a very central position and Wood was sort of leaning back and he was actually trying to guide it back across goal to try and get, you know, somebody a tap and I don't think that, that wasn't really a header for goal in that instance he was trying to pick out Vidra at the far post and couldn't quite get it past the goalkeeper yeah it was uh, Bardsy had the chance to put the cross in he left it uh, back to a teammate cross coming from central and as uh, Danny said Wood looking ahead back across goal but it was a save from McCarthy it remains Burnley nil Southampton 1 but Wood will be thinking there you know, Barnsley, put the ball in from a wide area. Yeah. You know, you've got the opportunity. When it comes back inside, Westwood puts it in from central. And it's like, there's nowhere really for Chris Wood to go with that towards goal. All he can try and do is what he did, nod it back across into the danger area. Well, you mentioned that Barzi not known for his attacking press. He actually had quite a lot of space in front of him, didn't he? He could, yeah. have, he could have run towards the penalty area. He didn't. But here come Burnley again, this time with Taylor on the left. He will advance forward. Looks to put the cross in towards the far post. It's headed away. It was three on three in the box, but it was a Southampton player that headed the ball clear. Here now is Stevens, flicks it down, and they'll go back with Barzi towards halfway. Here now is Jimmy Dunn. Gets it out to McNeil on the near side. Again, he's got Taylor in front of him. Goes to Taylor, cuts in field for the Leeds man. Now looking to get it back to McNeil. Good play on McNeil. Stood on the ball as he was looking to put the cross in and it's cleared away Charlie Taylor is screaming for a free kick and he was being pulled back referee played on and McNeil will be disappointed there Danny he couldn't get the ball into the area yeah it looks like that Sean Dyche has had a few stern words at half time up the tempo come on you can do much much better than this lads put them under pressure so far first half is a little bit too easy for them and they've responded they have up to press couple of minutes gone in the second half here on TalkSport 2 so Burnley nil Southampton 1 ball on the far side with Bardsley tries to slide it for Brownhill oh that's a foul by Bardsley got some of Gineppo there and the yellow card is out for the first time tonight it was late and it he was trying to pull out in all fairness wasn't he yeah I think it initially was going to slide in for the challenge and he realised he wasn't going to make it and he sort of, he pulled his legs away but it was just a little bit too late and he just caught Gineppo, I think it was his knee, caught him with his sort of, his trailing knee is what caught him. Yeah, Barnsley the first player into the book, Gineppo is down getting treatment, three minutes into the second half, reminder tomorrow on TalkSport 2, exclusive commentary from the Championship, Bournemouth taking on Norwich, four o'clock start, Joe Shen and David Conley are commentary team for that one, and before that across on TalkSport, Sheffield United, Leeds United, live from 12, Mark Saggers, Nigel Adderley and Jermaine Beckford are commentary team there, Tuesday night, Carabao Cup action on TalkSport, Spurs, Chelsea, 7.45 start, Hughes and Croft, Jim Proudfoot, and Clive Allen, our commentary team. Then on Wednesday, we've got a triple header on TalkSport 2. Carabao Cup matches, Newport, Newcastle from 5.30. Then Everton, West Ham, 7.45. And on uh, TalkSport, replay the game from earlier. Brighton against Manchester United. Sam Matterface joined by Tony Cascarino for that one. So plenty of football to come. It's been a busy day in the Premier League. West Brom 3, Chelsea 3. Brighton 2, Manchester United 3. And Palace 1, Everton 2. And then Thursday, it's Liverpool-Arsenal just to round it all off. It is, yeah. It's it incredible, is. isn't it? It is. Amazing amount of football. We bring it all here on the TalkSport Network as the ball played forward by Southampton. Headed away over on the far side. They'll want a second goal here. They'll know Burnley are not going to give up in fact the more desperate they get the more dangerous they become later in the game yeah they start to get a little bit more direct as that happens um, we've already seen they can cause problems from those sort of situations and um, when you know when you're on top in a game when you're playing quite well you do you just need to kill the game off and you get to 2-0 and then you can start to pass it around and control the game Shea Adams finds Ings down the left-hand side of the area, but it's hooked away by Burnley, headed for by Ward-Prowse, edge of the area here, chance to feed the ball in, it's hooked away by Long, just in the nick of time as well, because Danny Ings was loitering with intent, ball goes all the way back to Jan Bednarek, and then all the way back to the goalkeeper, 
Alex McCarthy is out of his uh, area, knocks it long, but long wins the header at the other end of the field. Brownhill putting himself about of it, but he's beaten to the ball, and now here's Gineppo, recovered from that injury, went for a little back heel, and Brownhill says, thank you very much, I'll have that, takes it away. Westwood tidies things up, and they go long looking for Chris Wood, who hasn't really been involved enough for Burnley's liking but he might get a chance here because Burnley pick up a loose ball in the uh, Southampton half here's McNeil again his touch just lets him down and Southampton now with Armstrong will look to go the other way and Armstrong just feeds the ball forward nice back heel from Adams back to Armstrong but he's eased off the ball McNeil a couple of times Danny he's just miscontrolled it at the crucial time Burnley in the final third their pass has been half a yard off yeah. You know, players have been running through and it. it's just been behind them, so they've had to break stride, check their run, and of course that just kills all the momentum of the attack. And of course, Southampton, who were in front against Spurs last week, then conceded five. Their confidence won't be the strongest if Burnley were to get an equaliser sooner rather than later, then the pressure really would be on. But of course, Southampton are looking to get to that scoreline of 2-0 which apparently is one of the most dangerous scorelines around isn't it no it's a complete myth I mean one well, one nil's far more dangerous was, than 2-0 up I was gonna say I think if you went down and asked Ralph Harsen who does he want 1-0 or 2-0 I think he'd take two but it is nearly where everyone goes oh yeah 2-0 that's a dangerous scoreline well not really because you're 2-0 up and you, and you should be able to see the game out from there it's just that when when someone loses you know a 2-0 lead we hear about it an awful lot more than when you, you know, lose a 1-0 lead yeah it's a little bit of a myth that one yeah, I think I'd, I'd much rather be 2-0 up than 1-0. Yeah, I think we'd uh, all agree with that. Ball played forward for Adams. His touch initially wasn't good, but then he had the strength to hold off the defenders, but in the end he miscontrols it out for a throw into Burnley over on the far side. Seven gone second half. You're live on TalkSport 2. Got the PJ Tour golf tonight as well on TalkSport 2. So plenty more live sports still to come. There's a ball here. He's miscontrolled by Stevens, but then he won it back. He was strong there. He had to be as well. McNeil will have to take care of this. Gets it back to Taylor. Taylor inside his own half finds McNeil as Burnley look to find an equaliser. That's a neat ball into Vidra, but Vidra turns straight into Romeo. And Romeo gets it back, and it will be eased back to uh, the keeper by Bednarek. McCarthy then tries Hello. to take on Vidra and almost got caught out. Well, that was calm, very calm. Oh, I, know, I, like, I like that. That was a little drag back. Well, he, he almost him, waited sent to clear him. the ball and Vidra was closing in from behind. Sent him for a pie then and went, see ya. Just a little drag back from the goalkeeper. Yeah. Good confidence. Yeah, it was indeed. If it goes wrong, he's in all sorts of trouble. Well, if it goes wrong, Vidra walks into the net, doesn't he? Poor clearance from Dunn on the near side. Remember, no James Tarkovsky out injured tonight. Uh, his future up in the air at the moment. Burnley's last 18 competitive games without him they've not won any of them and they've got the work cut out well tonight. yeah they have and of course they, they, I think they're missing Tarkovsky uh, but of course you know there's a lot of speculation about his future I think when he was at Brentford um, I think he missed a couple of games when yeah. there was a lot of speculation about him moving to Burnley yeah in and around that so you know that there, there has been one or two people saying well you know how fit is he well, maybe he's got a bit of previous maybe I'm sure we'll ask Sean Dyche about that after the game but I think we'll be straight batted on that one. I think you'll get, he's not fit. Yes. All going forward then here with Southampton. Into the centre circle. Romero just rolls the ball across to Bertrand. He's over the halfway line now, down the left. Looking to slide it in. Good run from Armstrong, but the pass was just in front of him. And Pope was quickly out of his uh, six-yard box and slid to the edge of his area to pick it up. But again, the movement this time from Armstrong. But that's what Southampton have done very, very well. You know, South Armstrong makes that diagonal run. You know, in behind the defence, straight ball through, just a little bit overhit this time. Yeah, Pope rather lashed at that clearance and as a result didn't get the accuracy he wanted. It was one back at the back by uh, Vestergaard. He gets the ball away. Here now is Gineppo over on that far side. Still 1-0 to Southampton. Danny Ings goal on five minutes. The difference between the two teams as the ball flicked forward here. And it's Armstrong who has it. He tried to find Gineppo. It's he's back to Pope. Oh, part of his uh, six-yard box again will hit it long downfield. He was aiming towards Wood, who got a little bit of it, but not enough. And now Southampton will come forward again. Here now on the near side is Walker Peters. He will go back to his goalkeeper, McCarthy. It's in the balance at the moment, this one. Burnley just need to fashion an opening if they can. That half chance early in the half for Wood, it was only a half chance. They, not enough power on the cross to get a, a good header on goal, but 
Here's Taylor down the left. Well, knock it long. Vidra will give chase. The problem, as we mentioned, you, you look at the bench of the outfield players. Lopen and Peters really defensive or midfield players. And then it's Thomas, Benson, Goodridge and Driscoll, Glennon. You know, squad numbers 37, 41, 44 and 45. That tells a story, doesn't it? Well, and, and they've just, you know, they've just obviously brought in Dale Stevens, who's defensive-minded, you know, city midfield player. So, realistically, if, if they are going to let Tarkovsky go, you know, and that's one, once Mee's fit, that shouldn't be too much. Well, ball over the top here. Wood's going to give chase. Wood might get on the end of it. It's a poor back pass. Wood is in on goal. He goes past the keeper and slots it in. But, well, the offside flag has gone up. The players at the back certainly didn't know that. The, the linesman never put his flag up. Well... Are they not supposed to play on any way and until put the ball in the it. net? Well, no, until he touches it, I think. Well, we'll have a look at this one again. Wood's onside. Wood, Chris Wood is on. He's miles onside. So Chris Wood has just had a perfectly good goal disallowed. What's he given? I don't know. I genuinely do not know. It's Burnley nil, Southampton one. Chris Wood, Wood, well, it looked to me onside on the re he looked well onside on the replay. He looks about two yards Vid onside. Vidra was maybe a couple of yards, but Vidra went nowhere near the ball. That's a real, real big decision. Sean Dyche wasn't happy when Chris Wood was not awarded a penalty first half. It was just a long ball over the top as Vidra is beaten to it. And the referee here, Andre Mariner, well, I I'm just not sure how that is not a goal because Chris Wood has beaten the offside trap he's beaten the final defender he bundled it over the keeper and has smashed it in from a tight angle and he's speaking to the referee now I think he's had his pocket picked there Chris Wood the linesman put his flag up the moment Chris Wood touched the ball and then the referee blew I didn't think they were supposed to do that I mean he's look it is, it is well, no, it's not tight, is it? He actually I gets a yard on side and then turns around to chase the ball. I mean, the, the first television replay angle isn't particularly conclusive. But Chris Wood looks perplexed, and I'm not surprised. Well, that is tight. You need to see that. I mean... Yeah, the ball given away here, so I'll have to try and nick up the other end. But Burnley, for my money there, are very, very unfortunate. Very unfortunate indeed. They trail by a goal to nil. And Chris Wood... Well, I can see Sean Dyche on the far side. He's, you can feel the rage from we're 100 yards away. You can feel the rage. He's, he's right next to the linesman, and he's giving him the rounds of the kitchen. He's giving him the rounds of the kitchen. And I think the referee's just pointed at him and told him to, to button it. The first TV angle, the, 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 only, the only replay that I've seen, it's at a funny angle that we're seeing it. Yeah. So we're, we're not looking right along the line. So, but, I mean... It, it, it's a strange, it looks like a strange decision. Well, the ball is played forward. Here is Chris Wood. He gets the ball out wide, and now Barsley will go forward. Look at the uh, Burnley players arriving in the box. One of them is Brown, he'll pull back by McNeil. Cleared away. Taylor comes in with a shot. What a save, McCarthy. Low down to his right and beats it away with his wrist. Charlie Taylor doesn't get many. That would have been a spectacular goal, but it's behind for a corner. Burnley are really getting ahead of steam here. They trail 1-0. Outstanding save, great strike from Charlie Taylor, fired in at the near post, comes through a crowded area, and the goalkeeper, as McCarthy, is absolutely superb to get down low to his near post and push it around. 14 gone second half, Burnley with a corner, can they fashion an equaliser here, ball headed away at the far post by Southampton. Burnley will keep it in, Barzi will put the ball back in, it ricochets up in the air, Headed away by Shea Adams, the ball sliced forward there by Dale Stevens. maybe a miscommunication as Southampton looked to break, it's out for a throwing over on the far side. Mark, I, I, I thought the referee was, the linesman was supposed to keep his flag down until the goal's gone in, Yeah, that's and then he raises his flag. Yeah, that's what I said at and, the time. Unless it's absolutely blatant that yeah. he was offside. With. And it but wasn't that, blatant. Oh no, that, I mean, you're talking, I mean, if he is offside, you're possibly talking millimetres. Yeah, in that, you know, you're talking toenail job, aren't you? Yeah, you know, it that, would have been the line would yeah. have had to tell us whether he was on or yeah. off or not. Yeah, that's so, I mean, isn't that the point of view? Oh, I just cannot believe they, they stopped play when it was clear there was a chance. As soon as Wood got on the end of that ball, there was going to be a chance on goal. It just struck me, the, I couldn't believe the whistle had gone and the referee had his arm in the air signalling for offside. Got it wrong, simple as that, they've got it wrong. If, 
Vidra, for my opinion, was offside. Wood wasn't, and Vidra went nowhere near the ball. Well, well he, even so, it was so close, I don't think the linesman should be making that call. No. Because by stopping the play, you can't use the VAR, and that's exactly what it's there for, isn't it? 1-0 to Southampton, more VAR controversy here at Turf Moor. And <laughs> or lack of VAR controversy. Well, yeah, exactly. Burnley on the wrong end of it, we feel, and the fact that the TV cameras are constantly now focusing on the officials says to me they've got that wrong. Ball played for by Burnley inside their own half. They win a throw in. We've had an hour here at Turf Moor. You're live on TalkSport 2, more live football tomorrow. Sheffield United, Leeds United, exclusively live on National Radio on TalkSport 12 o'clock. An exclusive from the Championship. Remember, TalkSport 2, your home of the EFL. Yeah, all, 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 all the monitors, all the TV keep keep going to the fourth official, they, the linesman and the referee. They do. I'm, I'm putting two and two together. Yeah. <laughs> and, and using your own eyes. And yeah, saying, well, yeah. Mm, maybe they got that wrong. Here's Southampton. Oh, they won't care about that. They've uh, had a little bit of luck. Would I don't think it was a penalty in the first half, but Burnley will feel two big calls have gone against them tonight. They trail by a goal to nil. And Sean Dyke, you, you can sense the rage, can't you? You can sense it, even from this side of the field. But it, but it, right, so this is the problem now you've got. You know, Sean Dyche believes it, that, you know, that it was a wrong decision. Now, if he berates the, the officials for that, and it turns out that he's right, do you not half feel that he has the right to do that? Because they've made a horrendous mistake, if they, if they have indeed made a mistake. Look, Sean Dyche will have seen that replay himself. He will know 100%. Probably better than we will. His analysts will be giving him the picture. I think the the only issue is is when the ball is struck from the goalkeeper. Well, it looked tight, and for mine, he was onside, but certainly close enough to go to to the to let, uh, yes, to, yeah. let, to let it go. Yeah, and that I think is the error. If he'd let it go and he was offside, then that's brilliant. That's what the the VAR's there for. Taylor puts the ball into the box for Burnley, it's headed away, not quite getting enough bodies on the edge of the box at the moment, Burnley, they're getting people attacking the initial ball, but not picking up the second one on the edge of the area, and that allows Southampton to play forward, and that will be possibly a foul, they're going to play on here, and Adams is chasing the ball, he's up against uh, Dunn, and Dunn just sees it out and plays it forward nicely in the end, and Burnley get the ball back deep inside their own half. Well, they're frustrated at the moment, the Clarets here, they trail by that golden nil, but they are and have been the better team in the second half. And I'd have to say Southampton look there for the taking if Burnley can get themselves in the, on the board. Ball now will go out. Another good ball. Here's Bardsley again. Gineppo goes across. Cross comes in. It's over Vidra. And it's headed away. This time they will recycle possession. They'll come out with Stevens to Charlie Taylor. Had that shot that was superbly saved by McCarthy. Taylor looking to get to the byline. He's gone past the fullback. Puts the ball into the edge of the area. It's cleared away. And the ball there, foul this time by Adams, who then kicks the ball away in frustration. And he has a word with the referee, and we are, I think, about to see a change over on the far side. Burnley possibly getting someone ready to come on. But this is a dangerous free kick here, Danny Mills, for, for Burnley. 30 yards out from goal, on the left-hand side of the penalty area. And this is where they caused problems in the first half, you know, putting good quality into the box. A very, very high line. You know, the, 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 the line is what 12 yards you know away from the ball on the edge of the box there's a lot of space to put this ball into well, here is uh, McNeil floats it in towards the far post flicked away and the volley at the far post from Dunny couldn't keep it down it was a, a tough chance he got a light late side of it but he skied it over the top he scored against Leicester of course last week but not on the board this week it's behind still Burnley nil Southampton one well I think it was Vesco wasn't just got that little touch on it and Apart from that, I think it then surprised him at the far post, Jimmy Dunham, and thought, well, oh, hang on a minute, centre half in that position. Maybe if there was a little bit of calmness, it'd been a centre forward, might have been able to hit the target. Uh, our uh, producer tonight, Carl, is with us, and he said that he saw me that Andre Mariner's got a problem with his headset. He can't hear Mike Dean at VAR headquarters. Well, why have they not stopped the game then? Well, and also, I'm not sure that excuses Eliza from putting his flag up, does it? I'm not sure about that one. Oh, that's, that's, that's embarrassing. If, if, if that's the case, then the game should be stopped and that gets sorted immediately. Go yeah. get a spare headset. Yeah. Where, where, where is, is, that, is that come out officially? Yeah. 
TV have said that, so yeah, yeah, yeah we've just picked up. I mean, oh, what a what a, produ what a producer he's he is. Got, yeah. he is. He's producing, he's engineering, he's doing all sorts. He he's sat there wearing his woolly hat. He's got the sweets out. Oh, oh. Come coming again. One 0 Southampton lead. But if that's the case, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it, 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 for me, no, for me, Danny, it doesn't excuse the it doesn't excuse the decision in the first place. But it is a problem. You're right. Uh, Southampton coming forward, trying to work their way forward. In fairness, they've offered very little in the second half Southampton and Burnley who trail by a goal have had a couple of decent efforts Wood had the ball in the back of the net ruled offside controversially then that shot from Charlie Taylor we've seen an effort blazed over from Dunn they are having chances can they conjure up an equaliser ball played forward Vidra will chase after it's cleared away over on the far side by Vestergaard do, do you not feel that this is about what was the game was it the Chelsea game where they came out VAR came out and admitted they got they got it wrong during the game well we'll but see that is, this, this is a similar sort of thing surely you shouldn't be saying that mid-game well here Burnley have it they're looking to try and uh, take the game into their own hands I guess if they can win the game then the controversy is a little bit less but if they don't then that will rumble on it is a huge you can't, moment. You can't admit to possible mistakes mid-game surely well, if you know they're there, you should rectify them, sure, that would be the... Well, that, that, that was the Chelsea game, wasn't it? You know, it was, it was the Chelsea, I can't remember who Chelsea were playing against, but there was a poor decision, VR come out and said, oh yes, we got that one wrong. Yeah, well, but, the ball um, is with Southampton. You are listening to Burnley against Southampton on TalkSport 2 with Now TV. Don't forget, you can watch Manchester City Leicester live tomorrow with a Now TV Sky Sports Pass for just 9 99 Search Now TV for more details. Here forward goes... You remember when I'm I praised strong. the referee in the first half? Yeah. Scrub that. Well. Edit that out. That never existed. That wasn't me saying that. Yeah, you knew as soon as you said it. Here's Wood chasing another long ball. McCarthy comes out and heads it away. And Brown will try to pick up the pieces. Bertrand did well. Bardsey was in. Now, has he caught here? Gineppo. He's gone down, but the referee's actually give, given a free kick in favour of Bardsley. So, uh, welcome along to our uh, listeners on TalkSport. You join us at Turf Moor here. Burnley nil, Southampton 1. Danny Ings goal on five minutes has uh, the Saints in front, but we've had a huge moment of controversy here. Chris Wood was flagged offside from a goalkeeper clearance. He ran round the last defender, beat the goalkeeper, put the ball in the back of the net. Replays says myself and Danny Mills a former England international alongside us Danny it looked like Chris Wood scored a fair goal didn't it? it didn't even go to VAR it didn't um, and that was a real shock I mean even if he was offside it's so so tight I don't think the linesman can see that conclusively it's not it's not blatant it's not obvious he's got to allow Chris Wood to go through have the chance then put his flag up and then go to VAR because there's no I, even if he's right there is no way on this planet that the linesman can say he is 100% sure that was offside because it was so tight. Yeah, controversy here. Uh, Wood scoring the goal. Thought it levelled things up. We've just seen a great shot from Charlie Taylor in at the near post. Was beaten away well by McCarthy. Second half, Southampton not offering uh, too much here. We're into uh, the uh, final uh, stages here of this one. It's live on TalkSport 2. Burnley nil, Southampton 1. And a free kick here for Southampton. Foul as they cleared away a free kick. But that is going to dominate the after-match chat. We'll speak live to Sean Dyche and Ralph Harson hoople after the game. But it is going to be surely the, the bone of contention if this result stays as it is. Um, well, Ralph Harson Hootel, he'd be happy with the scoreline, Danny. I'm not sure he'd be happy with his second uh, half performance of his team. No, Burnley came out second half, didn't they? Quite strong, you know, from the first sort of minute. Put, uh, put Southampton under real pressure. And Southampton haven't really been able to get a foothold in the game in this second half. The midfield players haven't been able to have the same sort of control. Ball comes forward here with Burnley. A shot from range is over the top in the end from... Vidra, he was chancing his arm, it was, what, 25, 30 yards out, he tried to catch McCarthy off his line, but he shot well wide in the end, and it's behind four, a goal kick. It, it was on though, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, it was on. Great chance, you know, McCarthy was way off his line, 
and, and Vigil sort of, it's almost like he tried to half scoop it, caught it with the outside of his foot and, and missed, it, missed the goal by about 20 yards. Well he scored a wonderful goal, didn't he, against Southampton when the team's last met down at St Mary's, a wonderful half volley from the edge of the area but... Tonight he looked like he had my boots on. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't a great one. It is still 1-0 to Southampton. Sean Dyche, his 400th game as a manager at the moment. Doesn't look like it's going to be a positive result for him. Manchester City in League Cup action at Turf Moor midweek. And a trip to Newcastle. You'll hear that live on TalkSport 2 next weekend. There's a ball here with Burnley. And again, Taylor's got room to come forward. And he'll come forward into the... Southampton half, McNeil tries to play him in, Gineppo will clear it, well, I think McNeil's had a disappointing game by his own high standards tonight. Yeah, he's given the ball away far too often and yeah. too easily, and under no pressure. Yeah, he hasn't found his range of passing at all, he may well win it back here, but he blocks it out, and you can almost see himself, he knows, he doesn't need us telling him, but he will be disappointed with that one. And it's out for a throw-in, and Southampton, you get the feeling, may think they've done enough, which is a dangerous really kind of mindset against this Burnley side we know they'll keep going to the final whistle that is guaranteed but they trail by a goal to nil you're live on TalkSport 2 Danny Mills former England international and here's a current England international Danny Ings finds the ball gets it away here's Shea Adams good sliding challenge there from Kevin Long stopped him running through on goal well Saints will want the comfort blanket of a second goal they just need to get Ings running in behind a little bit more. Shea Adams running in behind a little bit more, like they were in the first half. But they can't really do that because Romeo and Ward Prowse are not really getting good possession of the ball in the middle of the park. Here is a throw in for Carl Walker Peters on this near side. Looking to get the ball back in play. Southampton leading the early goal. It's a poor touch from uh, Adams out for a throw in. Burnley now, we've got 20 minutes left. Need to conjure up something here they'll feel their second half display is at least worth a point there's a ball played forward to Vidra Vidra beating there remember no Jay Rodriguez tonight he's out with an injury doing it tough at the moment Burnley as they were at the end of last season as uh, Dunn gets it back to his goalkeeper Nick Pope Pope's really been a, a bystander hasn't he in this second half here's Brownhill chests it down to Westwood plays it quickly over the top for Wood but across there goes Vestergaard gets it back to McCarthy left footed clears heads the ball forward Southampton Gineppo picks it up then he's dispossessed Burnley just winning more of the 50-50s at the moment yeah if I was Ralph Hasenhut I'd be thinking about making a change at the moment maybe going a little bit more direct maybe bringing Shane Long on yeah well the ball in from McNeil again it's cleared away but only as far as Westwood he's got a chance to high up across he tries to slide it in Vidra's touch is good down by the byline can he find a teammate he finds Taylor left footed cross McCarthy should claim it and does Wood came near post ball went to the far post and McCarthy looked comfortable under that good goalkeeper yeah too close to the goalkeeper he's in the six yard but it's got to be just anything just outside the six yard box where the goalkeeper doesn't want to doesn't want to come that corridor of uncertainty you know between the penalty spot and the six yard box that's where you've got to start putting those balls but i just think southampton they, they need to make some sort of change because at the moment burnley are really starting to get on top they are they need to conjure up an opening for vidra or wood to try and get them back on level terms here taylor goes back to dunn Jimmy Dunn will get the ball away to Westwood who now will look to switch play out to Barsley it's been all Burnley in this second half live here on Torchport 2 Gineppo brings him down a rather uh, basic challenge in the end just pulled him down and that will be a free kick which is taken quickly by Burnley who come forward here 74 minutes on the clock they slide it forward can Chris Wood pick up the pieces edge of the box no played forward here to Armstrong he now feeds it back to Ward Prowse Ward Prowse looks to just ease the ball back and they're going to go back to their goalkeeper McCarthy and he will play the ball out here's Romeo Romeo comes forward towards halfway but they don't really have an out ball at the moment Southampton they will go now to Bertrand Bertrand up towards the halfway line looks to come forward but again and we're going to get uh, a couple of changes here for Southampton well Danny Mills called it said he if he was Ralph Hasenhutl he would make changes and Hasenhutl is going to make changes 
Romeo has the ball in the midfield again forward it goes Armstrong made a great run through the middle but Ings couldn't find him didn't look to find him in truth be told Romeo now has it and if he looks up now he'll see Walker Peters in an ocean of space on this near side right hand side for Southampton the white shirts come forward again here now is Ward Prowse gets it to Romeo Romeo now to Armstrong Armstrong looks up goes to the left where Bertrand waits Gineppo in front of him Gineppo has it here on that left hand side is he going to put the cross in no Ings comes short for it and they're trying to work an opening again here there are plenty of white shirts forward for Southampton a second goal may well kill off Burnley's chances here at Turf Moor live on TalkSport 2 ball on the wide left Gineppo would need to put the cross in he plays it short instead chance at the byline they'll pull it back oh Gineppo overstepped it I don't know if he was trying to leave it for Armstrong or he just couldn't get it under control and it's cleared away to Vidra and Vidra outnumbered on halfway good play from Romeo and Southampton are coming forward again good patient play sorry really good patient play from Southampton just passing the ball around just waiting for the right opening yeah and they have it on the far side now their left hand side Gineppo is the option Adams and Ings are waiting within the width of the 18 yard box and again Southampton are patient over on their left hand side two substitutes stripped and ready to go for the Saints we're going to see them imminently here there's the ball out of play and now I think we will get those changes for the visitors and uh, going off Shea Adams is one of the uh, players coming off and he's going to be replaced uh, by Michael Oberfemi and the other change sees uh, Nathan Teller coming on and it's Musa Gineppo who goes off so Gineppo and Adams are the players that make way for so Southampton we thought so that Danny goes well, Shea Adams hasn't really had an opportunity to get into the game in the second half uh, you've got to leave Danny Ings on uh, and that's always going to be the case because you know if, if anyone's going to score it's going to be him at the moment I thought Gineppo's done alright down that left hand side he's had, he's had one or two tussles with Phil Bars there I just wonder if the manager's thinking and don't want him getting mixed up at anything yeah it's a fair point ball back in play and here forward go the visitors again but it's out for a goal kick so a change made with 13 left but they're running out of time here Burnley but it's what we said before Danny he's got that many players out injured he, yeah. he's his options are very very limited aren't they well Southampton needed to make a change to try and shift the momentum because uh, Burnley was starting to take control of it apart from the last two minutes they've been pretty much in control of, of this second half and I think that's what Ralph Hartnell is thinking that let's get some fresh legs on a bit more energy and, and try and shift the momentum in this game well here's Charlie Taylor who's been good tonight plays the ball back he has looked a good outlet on the left hand side here now is Westwood new contract for him you don't want to start off that contract on losing terms here's McNeil on the left goes in field finds Brownhill who more central now Westwood moves the ball out to Barzi his first touch was good but he's quickly closed down and they're just holding them off here Southampton at the moment and Burnley are back inside their own half and that was a, a risky pass there they're trying to play Chris Wooding down the left he'll win a throw in but at the moment they you get the feeling they need to be a little bit more direct Burnley don't they they're just not final third isn't it they don't have they don't have the quality in that final third and that's where you just wonder you know, if Tarkovsky is going to go you know let, let's just say it's 35 40 million does that allow Sean Dyche to go and spend 15 20 on maybe a creative player ball played in here towards Vidra cleared away at the near post that Charlie Taylor effort really was barring the controversial offside goal that never was has been the closest that Burnley have come here's McNeil centre of the field works it out to Barsley Barsley looks to get it to Brownhill ball nicked away now the counter attack could be on over on the far side Saints rushing over the halfway line it's the uh, substitute teller has the ball on the far side can he get a cross in there was only really over Femi in the middle and he overruns it's out for a throw in and into the final 10 we go here live on TalkSport 2 And it remains 1-0. All cleared forward by Burnley, who are in desperate need. 
of an equaliser. Ball over on the far side, in front of that Bob Lord stand. And it's given away by Burnley. Well, they have got a throw in, and again, even then, the simple decision, the, the referee didn't look overly convincing on that one. Andre Marin will be under the spotlight after this one. Nobody has come forward to us, Danny, and said that Chris Wood was offside, have they? No. Uh, and I think, you know, and again, and then we had sort of, you know, by our fabulous producer, um, you know, we, we then had the you know, TV have said that there might be an issue with the headsets and the communication with VAR and Mike Dean at Stockley Park. You're thinking, come on. If that's the case, change the batteries. Go and get another one. Yeah. No, it's a ludicrous situation to be in, isn't it? The Southampton have the ball at the back. They work it forward towards halfway. Long came to win the header and ball skipped off his forehead. Dunn clears forward for Vidru. Has tried hard but hasn't really had any quality ball into him. Certainly in this second half, his link up with Wood has not been anywhere near what it was in that first half. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, again, I'm trying to put two and two together here. I'm just assuming that if TV have come out and said that, uh, and, and that's the case, that the headsets aren't working, you know, obviously that was somehow communicated maybe to the, to the referee and whatever it might have been. So he might have known there was, they might have known there was no VAR in that situation. So the, the, the Lions might have had to gamble and go off that and just say, well, look, there, there, there's no backup, there is no VAR, yeah. so if I think it's offside, I've got a flag. Yeah, well, we, uh, we have got an official uh, statement from the VAR match centre. We'll get to that in just a moment as Southampton have the ball in halfway. They're coming forward. They lead by a goal to nil. Danny Ings' goal. But they haven't really threatened second half. The ball out to this near side. Taylor will cushion it forward for McNeil. McNeil in a 50-50 comes up with the ball. Did well under pressure there. Finds Stevens. Don't see many 50-50s in this time. No, you don't. And here now forward come Burnley. They're going to get a free kick here. Now the official line from the VAR match centre as the linesman raised his flag and the referee blew his whistle. The ball was deemed dead and the incident had been dealt with by match officials so VAR could not check the goal as the ball was put into the net when the ball was no longer active. So the VAR saying, look, the referee blew his whistle. There's nothing we can do. The, this play stopped at that point. Hang on. There's a ball. Well, we'll come to that in a minute. Burnley put the free kick into the box. Chance at the far post. Long was blocked as he went to pull it in. He manages to hook the ball back in. He's headed a cross goal and it's cleared away by uh, Southampton. We're just hanging on a little bit there. Ball will go back to the halfway line. Burnley had half a chance there to level things up. What seemingly seems a second time. Here now goes Taylor. Down the left again. Gets to the byline. Wins a corner. Well played, Charlie Taylor. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Today, early in the game, the game was ended. And they went back and checked the decision. But the ball was in play. Well, it wasn't. When the incident happened. The, the goal was happened after the whistle had gone, didn't it? So the goal never actually was, was it? That's the difference. Here's the corner anyway. We'll come back to that in a minute. Towards a far post, headed off the line in the end. But a free kick against... Sorry, just read that. Slate, just read that. Slate. I'm trying to get my head around that. We'll come back to that in a moment. Let's get the latest odds with 888 Sport. Burnley to win 66 to 1. The draw 13 to 2. Southampton 1 to 10 to win this one. Those are the latest odds with 888 Sport. 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. So VAR. This is the official line. The linesman raised his flag. The referee blew the whistle. The ball was then deemed dead. So what happened after that point? cannot be reviewed because the ball is not in play. But the linesman's not supposed to raise his flag. Well, he's not. So, the VAR... So, the, so the linesman's... VAR basically chucked the linesman under the bus, haven't they, and the referee. That's what's happened here. And clearly from that, he's onside. Because if he was offside, they'd say they got the decision right, wouldn't they? It's 1-0 to Southampton. The controversy will rage on and on. I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. I, I, I do not disagree, Danny Mills. I mean... The, the line we all know they've been told keep your flag yes. down yes until it, the incident is over there's been yeah. a shot or whatever the ball is done dead yeah. then you put your flag up yeah we, i don't agree with it all the time yeah because you get you do get stupid incidents where it's blatantly obvious but it wasn't but that was blatantly not obvious. blatantly obvious no it wasn't i, I think 
they're just trying to get themselves out of it yet again. Uh, no, I don't think they are. I think the linesman, by putting his flag up, has made a mistake, and the referee yeah, yeah, so, has but, blown his whistle. So that's what I mean. But they're trying. So they're trying to get themselves out out of it by saying, "Oh, VAR can't do this, can't do that." It's sh shocking decision. Well, they they can't allow as the ball goes out of play on the far side. Burnley are running out of time and running out of ideas here. They if, that, if, that, to nil. if that's right, linesman should be docked games. Yeah, well, I'm sure he will be. Uh, well, I, well, I'm, I'm talking several, because that's a game-change decision. Well, where we, we, all, we all know the protocols. We've all sat in those meetings and been told this is what's going to happen. If a player makes a monumental mistake like that, he's out of the team. Yeah. That, I, like that, I, I the, the, assistant, the assistant referee, by putting his flag up, and then... Actually, the referee shouldn't have blown his whistle either. No, he shouldn't. He shouldn't. And, it, and so they both... Both, both really. yeah, both of them. That should be it. Done and dusted. Yeah. If Andre Mario hadn't blown the whistle, then it could have gone to VAR. But as soon as he blows his whistle, the play is stopped. And the, the silly thing was, it was clear to all of a sudden that Chris Wood was going to have a run at that last defender. And he, to be fair, Chris Wood, he did fantastically well. But the goal... Oh, I can't wait for Sean Dyche to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll uh, we'll speak to him. You'll hear it on Talksport, Talksport Two tonight, I'm sure. It'll be interesting. He'll be weighing up Boney what he wants to say. He's had 20 odd minutes to stew on it over on the far side. His side have been much better second half. But Southampton with that crucial goal here on Talksport Two are in front tomorrow on Talksport. Sheffield United, Leeds United, live from 12. Mark Saggers, uh, Nigel Adley, and Jermaine Beckford bringing you all the action there that's on TalkSport on TalkSport 2 we've got exclusive commentary of Bournemouth against Norwich in the Championship two of the teams relegated from the Premier League last time out John Shannon and David Connolly will bring us that one it just feels the whole game has been overshadowed by that bizarre official uh, bit of officiating it was like we'd gone back you mentioned it we'd gone back in time with two 4 4 2s we've gone back in time with the refereeing there as well but, but this, this, is, this is where the linesman, assistant referee, and the referee should now be speaking immediately to Mike Riley after the game, and Mike Riley should be coming out and explaining why those two made the decision that they made. I think they have, in their statement, well, have, have clearly said they've made an error. The goal clearly but, but, but was but Mike the Riley, you know, Mike Riley should come out then. If, if they can make a statement mid-game, what has happened, Mike Riley should speak to these two after the game immediately, and then Mike Riley should come out and make another statement and say why they made that decision and explain to people. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Yeah, I agree. Burnley, though, on the wrong end. And but he won't, three because minutes. Mike Riley will hide yet again, like he always does. Well, three minutes left of normal time here at Turf Moor. It's not been a, the best second half here. There's a 50-50 challenge there that Armstrong won the ball but conceded a throw. And here now is McNeil. Needs a bit of quality from him. He wins a throw in. Burnley now, not quite in last chance saloon, but we're getting there. Two and a half left of normal time. Ball now on this near side. Charlie Teller, I think, has been one of Burnley's best tonight. Goes back to Dunn, away, a crossover on the far side. Westwood doing the fetching and carrying, fires it into Wood. It wasn't the best pass, and Wood couldn't control it. And they have just been lacking that little bit of quality tonight, Burnley. Going to be back-to-back -back defeats as it stands for them. It's a little bit of inspiration, isn't it, in the final third? That, that, that's what they've really missed. They, they've been very, very Burnley up to that point. You know, they've been organised, they've been strong, they caused problems from set pieces, but they haven't had that little bit of quality that they've needed in the final third, and they haven't had the referee making the right decision. Well, that, that is the main one, isn't it? And Sean Dyson said we scored a perfectly good goal. They'll also say they should have had a penalty in the first half. Whether I'd agree with that or not. Um, certainly do about the second half decision ball cleared away by Southampton it, it really attacking wise has shown very little intent in this second half but, but I think Burnley will be disappointed because the equaliser what would they had 25 minutes to go on and get a winner and the way they've played in this second half they can, could well have done that but they've got to keep going here it's not over yet late goal could come their way McNeil with a poor cross again straight into the arms of McCarthy and when you're down on numbers, Danny, you need your big players to have big games. And too many for me for Burnley have, have been OK and no better than that. Uh, and that's the problem. Again, it's that quality in the final third. You know, McNeil, he's got time and space, put the ball into the box, and it's uh, just a... It's a half-hearted effort. 
Let's just, I'll, I'll just float one in there, hope for the best. It's way too close to the goalkeeper. Well, here could be a chance for Southampton to wrap it up. Here's Ings, 25 yards out. He was thinking about the shot and he opted instead to keep possession. We're inside the 90th minute. We'll find how long he's going to be added on here. We've not really had any stoppages at all, have we, in this one? I can't imagine it's going to be too long. There's been no VAR. There's been no VAR. <laughs> we'll, we'll go over on the far side. So I have to just playing for time here. They got the goal in five minutes. It was a good goal as well. Well created by Shea Adams for Danny Ings. And now there's a chance here. They may get the second. Armstrong comes forward. Is he going to shoot from the edge of the D? He takes it into the area. Shot is blocked. He had players with him there. Teller was the better placed individual. And now Burnley... Well, chance and again McNeil loses possession three added minutes here come the Saints again Armstrong this time feeds it out wide chance the flag goes up and Ings puts it in the net well that time he did look offside it was a different linesman of course but the flag went up no complaints from Danny Ings well, I'll tell you what that was a good finish straight in the top corner brilliant finish now he might have just crept offside but he has a touch on his right foot comes inside yeah he's just offside tight though still tight yeah the yard off but the linesman got that one right all headed away by Vestergaard all played forward here by Southampton but Romeo's pass goes out we are into the uh, three minimum of three added on minutes are we going to get late drama at Turf Moor Burnley nil Southampton one all works its way out over on the far side crosses blocked Bards is attempted cross blocked and now Sean Dyche's side are in desperate need of a wonderful piece of skill or an outrageous bit of luck if they're going to get anything out of this. It will be back to back defeats unless they do. Ball into Wood but there's only Wood in the area there Danny and the ball's above him. He's got absolutely no chance. Yeah, no, it's again, keep saying it, quality in the final third. Just going back to the, the Danny Ings goal that was obviously offside. But again, the Lions put his flag up immediately, didn't he? I mean, I think that other lines were within their rights with their flags up immediately and then the referee is supposed to let the game go on until well, the they're supposed phase. to keep their flag down, aren't yeah, but, but, it, but if they But if they don't, but the referee is still supposed to play on, isn't he? Yeah. And, until that, so let's... Okay, maybe the... I'm trying to help the linesman out here, the assistant referee. Maybe he's made a slight error in that. They've, but I think they've both made but, an But error. the referee, yeah. I think, has made the bigger error because even, because even still, he should have allowed that to keep going. Yeah. And then pull it back later on. Yeah. As soon as he blew the whistle, then the ball was dead and there's no further play. The play didn't happen, did it? In the in the history of the game, the play never happened. And that's the problem that Burnley have had there. And they've been really harshly trapped. They're going to get one more chance, though. They come forward in the final of the three added on minutes. Here now is Dale Stevens. Puts in the cross to the far post. There's McNeil. Heads it across goal. Vidra had peeled off towards the penalty spot and the ball went in front of him. Here's Charlie Taylor. Taylor on the left, needs to get the ball into the area, they're running out of time, they've worked an opening here for Brownhill, puts the cross towards the far post, it's above everyone, it will be kept in by Bardsley, Bardsley stands up the cross, Wood coming for it, ball will break into the area to Stevens. his shot was blocked, Bardsley can't touch it, he's offside, it's behind for a corner kick, this is it, and Nick Pope's coming forward, looking for an equaliser for Burnley. Well, Bartley did very, very well there. It was, it was intelligent. He knew if it, 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 if it moved or touched that ball, he was offside and would give the ball back to Southampton. But Nick Pope, what is he? Six for eight. Six four. Ball comes He's into the area now. McCarthy punches it away. There's still everybody down. There's a Burnley player down in the six-yard box. He needs to get out of the way. Ball into the area. Wood lays it back. The Burnley player has got up. Here's Charlie Taylor. Pulls it back now. Here now is Westwood. Squares it. Chance for Stevens on debut. Has he got a shoot? No, he leaves it. And the referee's going to blow his whistle. And Southampton come to Turf Moor and pick up their first win of the season. But it comes in highly controversial circumstances. Danny Ings' goal on five minutes was a well created goal Walker Peters with a through ball to Shea Adams he got to the byline pulled it back and there was Danny Ings to fire in his third goal of the season but the huge talking points Burnley felt they should have had a penalty in the first half looks off to me didn't get referred to VAR but in the second half Nick Pope's long clearance Chris Wood raced onto the ball from an onside position the flag went up uh, here, full-time at Turf Moor, Burnley nil, Southampton won, Danny Ings with a goal on five minutes, but the main incident 
in the second half. Nick Pope's long clearance. Chris Wood from a seemingly onside position raced onto the ball. The flag went up. The referee blew the whistle. The players continued. Wood beat the final defender. Went round the goalkeeper. Put the ball in the back of the net. And because the whistle had been blown, Danny Mills, they couldn't go to VAR. It looks for all money. The officials have got this wrong and Rob Burnley have a point at least. Well, there's been statements come out from the, you know, from VAR and the officials and everything else at Stoffy Park. Shambles. Absolute shambles. You know, the, the, the assistant referee and the referee have got that completely wrong. They've not followed the protocols. No idea what they were thinking in that instance. For the listener at home, it looked like Vidra was offside. Vidra went nowhere near the ball. Chris Wood got back onside, raced onto the ball. I, I mean, we've, flag went yeah, up. We, we, we've seen it time and time again where the, the, the linesman, the assistant referee, has been told, keep your flag down until the player touches the ball or he's into that position, but keep your flag down until the, until the chance is gone and then you put your flag up. We have seen instances where the flag has gone up and then the referee have just said, OPEG, oh, play on and we'll check it on VAR. But the re it's incredibly tight. And even if even if that decision is right, I don't think the linesman can tell with his naked eye 100% that that is offside. And I don't think it is offside. I know all the statements would suggest that it's not. Well, they've not come out and said he was offside. No, the, the, the uh, VAR match centre... Uh, have admitted that there was a technical issue between Softly Park and the officials here, but it's the officials here, Danny Mills, that in our eyes have made the wrong decision. The, the assistant referee putting his flag up and then the referee crucially blowing the whistle. E even if there's an issue with the VAR talking to uh, the referee here, go and check the side, go and check the TV monitor for yourself. You know, you're a grown, you're an adult. You're a referee, you're a professional. If you think there's an, a, a dodgy situation and you can't hear, go and check it yourself. That's why it's there. You've got backup. You've got the option to do that. But they didn't follow the protocols. And I think they've cost Burnley. Yeah, they have indeed. Uh, I've got the uh, lucky privilege to go and speak to Sean Dash about that. We'll uh, hear more from him and from Ralph Harson Hootel. The main story here, though, Southampton pick up their first win of the new season. Danny Ings goal three in three for him. Surely he's going to be a shoe into Gareth Southgate's England squad announced on Thursday. It finishes at Turf Moor. Burnley nil, Southampton one.